Hi, ladies and gents. Welcome back to Miss Raga's art room. Okay, time to apply our color theory to our mandala. So, first, please make sure that you have finished your Sharpie work on your mandala. Okay, mine is much too big to fit on camera here, so you can see my Sharpie work is done. Make sure you've done a good eraser as well to get rid of any of those pencil marks so you just have the fine line. Okay, and then get your paint materials set up and ready to go. All right, the first thing you need to do is pick your color theme. Okay, what color theme are you gonna be working with? You're gonna be working with all warm colors, all cool colors. Is the theme of your artwork sunset over beach? Okay, um, in this case, mine is gonna be Shady Forest. So I'm gonna be working with greens, blues, and browns. That's gonna be the entire theme of my um, mandala. Okay, now I would like you to choose your theme, write it on the back, as well as the colors you think are going to be a part of it. And as you start working with the colors on your mandala, okay, you must also remember that there are other requirements, right? According to our rubric that we got when we first started this project. You must have dark value color used in your mandala. You must have light value color used. You must maintain that radial symmetry from your drawing, okay? So let's say I put uh, green here. Well, green's gonna happen here, 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 and here, the same one, right? If I put blue here, same thing, blues here, blues here, blues here, blues here, blues here. You have to maintain that radial symmetry within the color. 100% of your shapes are going to have that value range, right? That's that glow. Let me grab one of my previously finished samples. Okay, that's that glow from dark to light of your colors. Whether it's the single colored gradient, right? The layered color gradient, the two color gradient, it's completely up to you. And of course, Last but not least, good craftsmanship. All right, you wanna keep your paint within your, your circles and all that good stuff. Okay, so to get started, let's see. I'm gonna work, I think, actually with some of my browns from the center out. I think I'm gonna to go to some darker blues and greens in here, and then as I get to the outer edge, I'm gonna to go to some lighter ones. All right, so I'm gonna wet my brush. I'm gonna wet down my first shape. Okay, and I'm gonna get some brown here out of my color palette. I'm gonna put down some brown right at the very edge here. Concentrated dark, dark brown. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna do single color gradients for this first bit. Now I'm gonna take my wet brush and just flood and move that color down. And voila. First bit accomplished. There's that shape with the gradient. The reason you wanna use the gradient, ladies and gents, is because it's going to give you that glow. Now I recommend kind of moving around. Don't work shape right next to shape, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is you can get bleeds happening. Right, the, the paint tends to follow water, so if there's a wet shape right next to a wet shape, it can end up bleeding into it when you didn't intend for that to happen. So we wanna give a little time and space in between each shape we're painting and let it dry a little. All right, and there's my water for that one. Excellent. And I'm gonna keep working my way out. Right, maintaining that radial symmetry. Heaviest, heaviest, darkest color towards the center. I'm even repeating, right, to maintain that radial symmetry, the same direction and such as the gradient as it works its way out on the value range. And we have to be okay with the watercolor being a little bit fluid, being a little bit funky. Oh. What did I forget to do? I forgot to wet down my shape. I'm gonna actually add a little bit more concentrated brown on the front end of that. There we go. Oh, and already you can see I'm starting to get that glow. And take, take your time, ladies and gents. Take your time to do really good craftsmanship. Okay, so I'll put down my heavy concentrated brown towards the front there. All right, then rinse my brush and continue to 
fade it out. Now many of my students say, oh my gosh, it's so much easier to create value range with the paint than with the pencil. And you know what? Um, I would say that's a yes and a no. Yes in that you absolutely can get value much faster. But I would say no in the sense that the paint certainly takes a little bit more skill and time and patience to control. So, you know, just, you know, be patient with yourself. Take your time. I right, put down that really concentrated paint there. Okay, and same thing, I'm going to continue bleeding it out. All right, now once I finish this area, I'm gonna move on to another area that's a little bit freer of watercolor. I wanna give that time to dry so that I'm not smudging or causing a lot of blooming or bleeding. I don't wanna work like these shapes right next door next. Why? Well, because I could get a lot of bleed or smudging happening. Excellent. There we go. Okay, so I've got my first little bit down. Let's go to um, let's go to a, an area that's totally further out. So I'm going to do some of my lighter greens, my yellow greens out here. Um, so I think I'm going to do some yellow green in these circles out here. So what I'll do is I'll first put down some water. Okay, and then same thing. I think in this case. I'll have the yellow green kind of going concentrated from one corner to the next over. And then just do a little blend. Oh my goodness, look at that. Like practically did it for me. Love it. A little bit more concentrated yellow green there. Okay, I'm gonna move to my next one, right? So radial symmetry, whatever happens on this outer edge, let's rotate. I move to the next. So there, same thing. Yeah, it's tricky with this big, big paper on my, on my camera. Okay, and same thing, working my way around. All right, ladies and gents, you get the idea. Let's just do a quick recap. So I'm gonna move my painting out of the way. A little bit more touch of green there. Love it. Okay, move my painting out of the way here. So once again, let's recap. Remember, you should pick your color theme. I'm doing that shady forest tree thing. So I'm gonna be working with greens, blues, and some browns. Remember, you must include a dark value color. You must include a light value color, okay? You must maintain radial symmetry, even with your color. Use 100% of shapes that have value range, and of course, good craftsmanship. All right, ladies and gents, take care. I'll see you next time in Miss Raga's art room.